had to describe Thomas Sanders, and I do. I think... <laughs> I think it would be the male embodiment of sunshine in a person. Yeah, I think I'm going with that description. <laughs> Hey guys, Sean Kelly here. Welcome back to the Why I Like You series, and obviously today we're talking about Thomas Sanders. I can't <laughs> with this human being, I swear. I think... <laughs> I think I found Thomas through Vine. That's how I think I found him. And then when I realised... Like, I didn't have Vine. I found Vine through... I found his Vines through YouTube. But then I realized he had a YouTube channel. I was like, oh, cool. This was like back in the day. And I was like, cool, I wonder what sort of person this guy is. And I subscribed and Sanders Sides has me by the hair. I was gonna say by the balls, but I was like, mm, don't have those. It's interesting because a lot of people in my past have told me that Doe reminds them of the Sandicides videos. I was like, hmm, okay, I wasn't even subscribed to Thomas at that at that time, but sure, go off. <laughs> I think they thought that she was very similar to Thomas's character of Virgil or Anxiety, and I'm like, I see where you're coming from, but no. <laughs> uh, no, I quite enjoy Thomas just Thomas Sanders as a person and I think it's because he is genuinely such a sweet optimistic person and I know there's a lot of stuff about Thomas that we don't get to see we don't really get to see him when he's having like an off day or anything like that and I don't I don't mean during like a Sanders sides videos because obviously those are scripted but we don't get to see Thomas when he's having like a bad day or an off day or whatever and I I, I know we don't see that from him but I like to think that he's the type of person that would still probably try to help others even if he's not feeling good himself. He just seems like that kind of person. And I, number one, I relate to that. <laughs> but number two, it's not always the best to have that mentality. And I think through his content, he's sort of exploring that and figuring that out now, which I'm very happy with because genuinely Thomas deserves all the best things in the world and he is precious and he is baby and we must protect. <laughs> no, genuinely with a lot of his scripted content, it's fascinating because a lot of the stuff that they talk about, it's genuine information and philosophy that quite a lot of people wouldn't otherwise know about. And I think, like, I, I, what was it? I think it was on the topic of lying. Was it lying? Yeah, it was the topic of lying and whether or not it was good to do or whatnot. That, I've forgotten who specifically the philosopher was, but that genuinely showed up on an essay question that I now have to write. So the fact that I know knowledge and I have brought it up with my tutors about said philosopher. They're like, how do you know that? I had to be like, oh, you know, I've just read a little bit of it. I couldn't, I couldn't say that I saw it in a YouTube Santa Slides video. They wouldn't get it. <laughs> this is really bizarre. <laughs> but genuinely, Thomas seems like a, such a sweet person. I mean, he's a Hufflepuff, so obviously, but he seems like the type of person that you would genuinely just gel with really quickly because he's such a welcoming person, such a kind person. And I feel like that's what attracts a lot of people to his channel and his content is that he's so, <laughs> I don't wanna say pure, but pure. Like he seems like such a pure soul and a pure spirit and such a gentle spirit as well. And as a quote unquote gentle spirit myself, I really vibe with that. And it is fascinating to see though not only the scripted content that Thomas comes up with, but just the content where they're sort of messing about and, you know, making a video because they're bored. <laughs> I think one of the few that I saw, what, like one of the few I mean is like the real versus fake anime editions. And I'm just like, I like that. <laughs> I've actually submitted like my own stories into that, but <laughs> they never get read out. 
No, but genuinely, Thomas is... Thomas, Joan, and Talon, I should say, because I know that the entire Thomas Sanders channel is run by those three. They all... And I follow all of them on, like, Twitter and Instagram and whatever. They all seem like genuinely really cool people. And they all have, like, their inner demons that they're facing, but they are being so incredible by not only facing those demons that they might be facing, but they're helping others to face their demons by making content about it. You know, through through characters, even if they have to make it through characters, the message is still there, you know. And I love the fact that quite often there's music involved in it, because musicals are my thing, and I'm just like, yes, musicals, more songs to learn. Um, no, going into the actual Sandicides themselves now, there are quite a few theories, and there's there's the rainbow theory, which I'm very inclined to believe. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's that every Sanders side has a color that sort of represents them. And the theory goes that Logan actually has the wrong color. He has like dark blue. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that entirely, but I know that <laughs> I know that the prediction is is that the next side that's going to be introduced is going to be orange and I kind of agree with that because again you look into it we have we have red we have yellow we have you know green we have we have two sets of blue which is weird then we have purple like <laughs> there's truth in there somewhere I don't know if they've realized it yet but there's truth in there somewhere <laughs> um but then you've also got the sort of the dark sides and the light sides and whatever. And it's really interesting to look at because the dark sides aren't really portrayed as bad people, if that makes sense. A lot of villains that people like are usually the ones that they can empathize with. And I'd say with Thomas's dark sides, quote unquote, <laughs> is that genuinely there are aspects to them that are really likable and it's the same with the light sides there are aspects of those characters that are you know dislikable <laughs> is that a word no but you are like you can see traits in both light and dark sides that are both redeeming qualities and then condemning qualities and i really like that actually because with a lot of characters that i've seen online usually they're very one-dimensional or you know, they start very one-dimensional, but then they sort of go, they have a backstory that they delve into. And I like the idea that with Thomas, with the Sandersides, there is this backstory that all of the sides know, but Thomas doesn't, and we don't. So it's sort of a bit of a guessing game at the moment because we don't know where the story is gonna go. You know, with a lot of the Sandersides videos, if there's like a two-parter thing, that then usually it's like one part is uploaded this week and then the other part is uploaded next week, that's fine. But with the more recent content, like with the introduction of Remus and with, you know, Thomas not going to the wedding, look, not going to the wedding, not going to the callback and whatever, I feel like we're getting more, like, <laughs> we're getting more traces of a story that has been there all along, but we just didn't know it. See, with the Sandicides, a lot of it has been very episodic, but I feel like now, especially now, because the latest episode that has been uploaded was, again, the wedding episode, but again, I feel like that there's a whole story that we're missing there and like there were two to three sides that were actually missing and I don't know if that was due to editing or due to like anything else but the fact that Anxiety or Virgil was absent during that episode that irked me like not irked me it unnerved me because Virgil has sort of been a part of most of the episodes where there is an a, like a big dilemma going on so the fact that the the fact that he was part of an episode where he admitted to being a dark side and then the next episode he just wasn't there that unnerved me because I thought hang on a minute where is he where did he go we got appearances from 
almost everyone. Like, I don't... I don't think we got an appearance from Remus, but we had had an, a, like a big Remus appearance anyway. But Virgil has always been someone who has been an integral part of these episodes. Like, sometimes there will be episodes with just, you know, Roman and Logan and whatever, but Virgil seems to be the side that is always there, and now all of a sudden he's gone. After admitting to being a dark side in a situation that was full of frustration and probably anxiety as well. Like, even Logan was still there in, like, his little text box. So that, and I'm getting into theory territory now, but... <laughs> now, now, I've been getting into theory territory for a while. But, do you see what I mean? Like, it, it sucks you in. Because, and again, it's just one person playing all of these characters but it sucks you in because you don't really know where it's going next. And again, you think it's an episodic thing, but it's not. It's very similar to Rick and Morty in the sense that... <laughs> I, I've not watched Rick and Morty that much. But it's very similar to Rick and Morty in the sense that a lot of it is episodic, but then there is also an overlaying story. So, genuinely, number one, I fear for Virgil. I don't know where he's gone. But also, <laughs> also, I demand more. <laughs> I know, these videos take a long time to make and I am more than happy to wait for them. But like, I f the, the child in me is like, Mar! This, again, this is what happens. Like, you get so invested in Thomas, like Thomas's personality, that you also find yourself getting invested like more and more over time in these sides and how they deal with things. And again, the fact that they aren't completely perfect characters, you know, it's just, it's so interesting to me. It's so fascinating. It's almost like doing a character study, but then you realize, no, all these characters are from one person. It's crazy. It's absolutely mind blowing. And the fact that the three of them were the ones who sort of wrote this story, like this overarching story, as well as these sort of episodes, and then they edited them and put them all together and whatnot. Like, they've outsourced a couple of times, but majority of the time, it's just the three of them. It's really freaking clever, and it's just amazing. And again, I give so much credit to Thomas, to Talon, to Joan, because it's just amazing to watch and amazing to witness. And again, in case you haven't noticed, the episodes have been getting longer as well. Most Sandicides episodes at the beginning went for 5-10 minutes. Now they're going from an hour. It's just amazing. And again, I don't want to bring up Shane Dawson too much, but he's been doing the same. Like, conspiracy theories and documentaries have been going from, you know, 30 minutes under to now going for an hour to two hours like it's incredible the amount of work the time and effort that goes into these things is just astounding and it's just I look up to Thomas so much not only as you know and ed like editing wise and whatnot because I know a lot, that's a lot of Joan and Talon but the characters the writing the inflictions the acting it's all so incredible to watch and again a lot of it you know it's not really you know it's not really happening and it's in the mind palace i suppose you know it's not there but you want to believe that it's there because it just looks so cool and these stories are very relatable you get sucked into them really easily and i'm get the more i talk about it the more you know, into it I'm getting, and it's just incredible to witness. And again, you looking at Thomas just one-on-one -on -one in person, you probably would never guess that, because he's such a sweet, likeable guy. And you know, Talon and Joan, they're both such sweet, likeable people. I mean, <laughs> Joan can swear like a sailor, but even still, like, you can tell the friendship between the three of them is so real and so strong. And I just, I love watching that sort of thing because it shows that, number one, the friendship is real. <laughs> 
but also number two the support that they give each other is so genuine and so loving and believable and I just love watching that sort of thing so much so kudos to all three of you I swear <laughs> um, I know that both Thomas and Joan were in Australia like ages ago for a convention I am so mad because the day they were in Australia I was in the same location for a uni reason and I'm just like I was this close to meeting you guys in person and I didn't ah I'll get there I'll get there eventually to meeting the three of them I will I I swear to god I will <laughs> I have so many people that I want to meet but yeah <laughs> But I'm going to stop waffling on because this has been going on for way too long. But again, Thomas, Joan, Talon, if any of you ever see this, you guys are absolutely astounding human beings. And frankly, I love you guys for doing what you do. Keep it up. It is amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop now because otherwise I'll go on for ages. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Why I Like You series. And I hope you guys are having a good day, night, month, year, whatever time it is in the world. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!